That's my comp sticker from uh, Scale Jamboree. And I think you were at a comp today too, weren't you? Yes, I was. Call to crawl number five. Call to crawl number five. A uh, very special studio welcome today to Ted from Mad Moose RC. Show off your shirt. I'm going to show off my shirt because that's a pretty cool shirt actually. Yeah, my shirt's nowhere near that. Thank you. Yeah, very cool. So, uh, Ted showed up here from Sweden because of tiny trucks. Yep. That's why. And it feels and really, really <laughs> surreal. My buddy Chris Fisher, who oh. we have uh, Mad Moose with, you know, we were, we were talking, we were joking about it this, this past spring. Go, you know, wouldn't it be cool to be able to do a rig review one day in Canada? Yes, it sure would. Now I'm here. There we it's are. It's surreal. So, uh, you guys have seen me talk about this Mad Moose portal axle project that these guys have pioneered, and um, these things are incredible. And today, we went out to Call the Crawl number five, which is the fifth event in the local Ottawa Call the Crawl series, and uh, Ted was here for that, which was good timing, by the way. Yeah, it was. Very and good timing. we got to see the Moose Knuckle Jeep take over a whole bunch of crazy lines that nobody else could do. And uh, the difference between this Jeep and this Jeep is not the metalwork, it's actually what's underneath. Like, take a look at the actual axle clearance on this Jeep. I mean, I've got Terramods under mine, and it's got lots of clearance, but this is just insanity. I mean, wow, portal axles. What was the brainchild for this? Well, how come you guys started doing portal axles? Uh, well, to back up a little bit, um, I got back in RCing after uh, uh, my middle son won the, a Rubicon, actual Rubicon, he got that, and then started to get back into it, and I've got a one-to-one -one, uh, Volvo Laplander from 69 that I'm renovating, awesome. and it's, it is, it's a, it's a blast to drive, and renovating it, and I actually have a PTO trailer to it, so I can, wow. with a vacuum switch, I can engage the, the drive train on the trailer. Wow. And that got me into to building, uh, I totally revamped the Honcho, it's on our YouTube channel, PTO Honcho, and, and, and then I needed some parts, and I got hooked up um, with Chris Fisher, who's also an, an expat living in Sweden. Great designer, by the way, he's got a Shapeway store. You can find the link in the uh, description box. Yep, printable RC. And uh, so, yeah, so I started chatting with Chris, and it was less than a year ago, and said, oh, you know, he mentioned that he was really good with uh, CAD drawings and whatnot. I said, oh, you know, it'd be really That's cool to, to do a, um, a scale version of my Laplander body. Ah, send me some pictures. About a week later, a week and a half later, it, it all worked up. I had another buddy who's um, got an Object 20 uh, 3D printer, and I uh, said, ah, give me all the files. So we did that, threw it up on the web, and people were going nuts, and uh, Chris and I are going, what else can we do? Yeah. And since I'm into the, the Volvo Laplander, and yeah. the other military version is the newer version, it's also known as the C-Series, but TGB 11, which is a 4x4, four four, and then you got the 13, 20, which are 6x6 six six versions. Yeah. And we said, well, what else is missing from the market? And we're going... Scale portals. This right here is missing from the market right there. So that is yeah. actually our Gen wow. 1, the very first version. Yeah. Uh, we were, we picked up the, the, the portal housing gearing is actually from Robinson Racing. The, yeah. The, um, the spool in there is actually from SDI. Yeah. Uh, which is nice. It was nice and small. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, fit pretty well, but... You know, we threw it out there as well, and in, in, uh, I think the first of March, we threw up a post about it, and then people really started going, ooh, shut up, they take my money. So we're thinking, well, all right, well, let's, let's work on this. And uh, so we decided, all right, well, you know, what else can we do to make it better? We could do our own internals. Um, but at the same time, you know, we wanted some of the stuff to be, you know, stuff that can be found in local hobby shops, and yeah. one was the Ascender Spool, uh, which is a fantastic uh, spool to, to build off. It's yep. smaller than, than the axial and um, and since you guys already make a fantastic uh, pinion input that was uh, Yeah, you can perfect. use any drive shaft on it then. Yep. You can Instead use any drive crazy shaft. crazy ascender shaft that they make you buy. Yep. So that was perfect. That's how we you know, got in touch with you. We wanted, we wanted a bunch of them. Yeah. 
And uh, nobody wants a bunch of Ascender input shafts unless you're doing something ingenious. And that's pretty much what happened here. So I'm kind of glad you guys went for the Ascender stuff because the uh, it's really easy to get a hold of. Yeah. And they've got the HD input pinion gear now, and so they're, they're pretty tough. I haven't broken any of the newer input shafts or input gears uh, since the original mess up on those. And I did break one. I did break the did original. You? Yeah, the original Ascender uh, planet gear or um, pinion gear had a no webbing on the back of the teeth. And so they were actually, you'd snap the teeth off just trying to do a, you know, a wheelie. Hmm. They weren't very strong. And the new ones are bomb proof. So perfect. Yep. I mean, if you have a yeah, really good really product, yeah, then you really might as well. Them. Yeah. Yeah. I like them. So if this was the generation one, what did like you? Uh, this was SDI parts, and then you changed the gearing or the gears that you used in the ends, and yeah. this was all sort of seemed like it's leading up to a different product. I mean, you still have portals now, but they're they're not the same. Well, yeah. Well, we the, the portals we we designed after the um, the C series portals underneath the Volvo military trucks. Yeah. And um, they are really, really close. The only thing that really differentiates them, that's the, the size of the, the portal housing, or yep. the, um, the uh, diff housing. Yeah. Uh, we'd love it to be a little bit smaller, but hey, it's still crazy. It looks fantastic. Yeah, it so. does. It looks good. You know, put a little drain plug in there and you can actually shave that off if you want and put in some scale hardware there. Cool. And um, so, yeah, so this is the first version. We just wanted to test it. And yeah. Thought, well, you know, we'll, we'll go with um, an integrated upper link mount. Sensible. Uh, yep. And um, pretty much we was thinking, well, you know, just pretty much be able to bolt it on um, yeah. to an SCX-10 base and, you know, whatever else. So is that uh, what you did? You put them on an SCX? Yep. Right away? Put them on a um, uh, Recon G6. Okay, yeah. And uh, was actually over uh, to the uh, the big pit bull event at Blue Rock this past May. Yes. And uh, crushed it. I rolled twice <laughs> of I think it was 400, 400 gates. I rolled twice and wow. uh, was just cruising over everything. Uh, I've really tried to beat the heck out of them. We've yeah. tried to do everything we can to break them. Uh, the Gen ones we haven't broken at all. Not one single issue. Um, cool. They they've been they've been really really awesome really really awesome. So then we figured all right well you know we got something really good here. Um, sure do. But let's uh, let's take it up a notch. Let's make it better. So here the diff cover could not is not removable. It's all integrated. Uh -huh. So it's actually the backside uh, that you would t remove to yeah. get to the the spool. And we're thinking well you know. We like making crazy builds and doing kinds of cool stuff. So we figured, well, what, what could we do better? Well, why not make the diff cover removable? Yeah, exactly. And the input side permanent. And that way you can take off the diff cover, throw on an additional yeah. input housing. Make a pass-through axle. Pass-through axle. Yeah. And on the inside, we actually don't have this one open. But you open it up, you can actually flip the, um, yeah. you can flip the diff. Yeah. You can flip this bowl. Um, so, absolutely no problem. And we decided, well, hey, why not do the same thing on the front axle? Yeah. Because now all of a sudden, if you want to do a multi axle build, hey, yeah. you can do. You want to do a, steering, you do a six by six yeah. with full steering, or you want to do a yeah. 20 by 20 yeah. full steer, go for it. Yeah. It's possible. You just got to figure out the rest. <laughs> so um, Really cool. So yes, yeah, so that's what we decided to do, and we went from the SDI, we went to the Ascender spool, yeah, and um, we have totally designed all of our own internals, and uh, the gearing. That's great. Out at the wheel, you're getting a, a two to one gear ratio, so you're getting a lot Isn't that of crazy? torque. You're getting a lot of torque. So the complaint about having the Viterra high pinion and ring gear ratio is negated on these portal axles because there's a two to one ratio in the wheel. Yeah, it's crazy. You can. The drive's really good too. I just want to tell you. No, you got to drive a little bit today. Yeah, I you're mean, the only person I trust with it. It's really smooth. <laughs> it's very smooth. The, the the torque, the wheel torque is there right away, and you can you can just inch around. There's just so much torque. It's stupid. Yep. Yeah. we had yeah. uh, we actually 
we had one issue today. One of we have, we've sold twenty as a as a as a pre production. Cool. And uh, yep, they went out the door real fast. And, they sure did. Uh, really happy that you guys picked up the set. Except yeah. You guys decided very excited. to go six six. Yeah, we're gonna do a six by six, and so we're making use of the pass through um, opportunity on the center axle, and that's gonna be fantastic. Yeah. So one of our uh, early adapters uh, sent a picture today where his uh, his CVD. It looked like somebody dropped an atomic bomb on him. It was yeah. it was in pieces, and um, so yeah. So um, Jer Jeremy Kilburn, way to go! Good job. Yeah, give you a thumbs up there. He wielded hard. He wielded hard. He was. <laughs> he said he was driving a uh, a class three line, and yeah. uh, he had the front front right wheel wedged, and uh, full full steer, and he lifted the entire truck. Yeah, and then. It snapped. And then the CVD finally gave up. But that's not so crazy. It's not, actually. Yeah, I mean, you should almost be kind of proud of that. Yeah, yeah, we're proud yeah. of it. I mean, that's yeah. some pretty hardcore stuff. Yeah. Um, the exciting part for me today was to see where you can go with a portal axle that you just can't go with a regular truck. Uh, one of the cool things that we did on the, at the Call to Crawl was uh, there was this, there were two, two logs that were traveling going in the same direction you had to drive over the two logs to get to the uh, through the gates and in the middle of the two logs was this big knotted mess on the log that kind of went along like this and that, that was Wade that, that was all Wade's idea yeah so he set thanks, all that Wade. up yeah yeah he's torture just torture well this truck uh, didn't with the portal axles on it it literally has no issue driving over stuff that's in the middle of the truck I mean there is so much room underneath the, the the peg and the diff here it's just it's ridiculous the amount of space that's there and where this thing would go uh i, I mean i'm thoroughly impressed and in tiny trucking we kind of take scale seriously over here and not only just are a little bit do these yeah, <laughs> not only do these <coughs> axles actually work i mean they're strong there's great components in that you guys did a really good job on the design they're, they're tough they're beautiful all that, but they're also a really fantastic scale representation of a legitimate axle. I mean, you added a whole bunch of little details, even just as much as having the the uh, drain plug on the on the diff cover. I mean, that to me is the little extras that make things worth worth looking at. Yeah, they're very thanks. very pretty. Yeah. Yeah, and even you know on the the additional housing for for an in yeah. for a pinion going in. I mean, scale hardware and the small scale bolts and and even out here on the the sides. You know, uh, yeah. putting small little scale bolts out there, and and these are these are SLS nylon prints from from Shapeways, and the detail is amazing. It is really nice, and they are they are strong, and the nylon material holds up really well. I mean, this is yeah. I mean, I painted this up when I first threw it on the the recon rig, and I mean, I've been trying to bash on rocks and everything else, and it it. It no. barely scathes. It's uh, it's yeah. really amazing material. It's it's incredible. We've used the nylon for years on the Terramod axles, and now the TM8 and inner fenders, and and you know a lot of stuff that actually takes beating, like shock mounts and stuff. And and I've had no issues with the SLS nylon. I think it's a great material. Yeah, it is. It yeah. is. Now you probably could see when when Chris was holding this up. There's two little zip ties on there. Uh, so that was actual uh, United Airlines carnage. Yeah, um, <laughs> I've uh, had some uh, busted up trucks too that came out of uh, an airplane suitcase. So I'm sorry to hear that that was your experience, but yeah. uh, we can verify that zip ties will fix anything. Yep, I've ran that all day today, and uh, yep, held like a champ, bouncing so, and pulling and everything else. Tell us what's going on with this truck. Let's start. I mean, we've got a portal axles already, but uh, if we're going to rig review the whole thing, let's start from the bottom up. So okay. you're running Rock Beast tires on what kind of favorite wheel? Uh, these are actually the G-Maids. I uh, don't remember which model they are. but They're, they're heavy. They, yeah, they are. They're really, really heavy. Um, and it looks like there's a big chunk of steel inside. Yeah, there is a big chunk of casted uh Wow. metal in the middle there and uh yeah they're beadlocks they're really really nice cool. uh like them a lot uh they look really cool uh now on the gen ones i was actually able to put your black detroits on there oh cool um but we decided to go with a higher gearing ratio and we're actually going to back that off a little bit now 
so that these portal housings will actually fit a uh, larger span of, of wheels. More wheels, yeah. So I can put yours on there. I've actually shaved them down a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I ran with those this, this weekend. Jeep, uh, well, what have you got for shocks in here anyway? Those are the G-Made uh, TSO2s. Okay. And uh, they're... There's no oil in there. It's just uh, a spring on the inside. Yeah. Uh, I've never tried them before. I bought them uh, about a month ago and thought, well, hey, I'm going to put them in there and, and test them out. Yeah. And, um, yeah, they they bought them out uh, when I'm driving. Um, and, um, yeah, I haven't had a problem with it. it Actually, it they... the lower. Yeah, I'm surprised how much, how, how nice they ride. Yeah. Uh, the... I didn't feel like it was tippy or anything weird today. No, and I actually have the weakest springs in there, uh, so I just wanted to yeah. test them out. So I'll, I'll throw in the, the stronger springs in there and, and check those out. But um, even with a lot of the lines that you set today with, you know, <laughs> the side inclines and whatnot, you know, I was a little worried that it was going to kind of flip a little bit. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't a problem at all. And, and the higher center of gravity we really haven't had a problem with. I mean, we got a lot of weight with our hard metal gears out in the, the axle That's housing. That's true, you do. 32 pitch gears. And um, uh, we're also doing a, should anybody have a problem with it, we're actually doing brass covers for the porter housings too. So um, That'll add some big time weight on that. That'll, that'll even add some more weight. But center, yeah. a higher center of gravity hasn't been a problem, especially with these harder. Hard body, yeah. Yeah, hard bodies. I was, I was really skeptical when I first started doing the build. Uh, <laughs> on your skeleton chassis and thinking, I was trying mm -hmm. to convince you. Yeah, you convinced me, and it's it, yeah. uh, not a problem at all. No, no, they ride not so nice. All. So you've got portal axles running on G-made wheels and shocks, yep. and then you stuck it on a skeleton chassis. Yeah, it's an okay chassis. Good. No, it's an Working awesome out. chassis. It's an awesome chassis. Um, yeah, I'm I'm so happy with it. It's. Uh, it's really nice to, to build on, simple, uh, lots of holes for making adjustments and uh, yeah. raising your, your length points and, and um, pan hard wasn't a problem at all. All our, we're not doing any four link front axles uh, because, yeah. well, there's just not Track bars where it's at. Yeah. So, yep, so it's pan hard, so it wasn't a problem. Taking a, an axle that you guys have never put on that before, yeah, and it, it was, it was super stupid simple. It was well, that's super good. Easy. Yeah, it was a real pleasure to build on. Yeah, I wondered how they were going to work uh, because the the portal axles are sitting up higher in the chassis, and I was kind of thinking, well, I don't know how that's going to. I mean, I never tried it, so yeah, yeah. And, and I, I could actually get the it. yeah, and I could actually get the ride lower too if I were to put a shorter uh, shock on there as well. Yeah. So and that's part of the reason why they are bottomed out, just because. Yeah, so that it's not riding super stupid high, but even there, I mean, it's there's yeah. still, there's still a lot of wheel well clearance there, so I could drop it even more. Cool. And of course, this is the two door JK that we've all been well acquainted with already. Mm -hmm. um, you did something kind of cool with this that I haven't seen before yet. Uh, you made the lid removable. Yeah. So. So is it just like? not screwed in and that's it no it's not it's just a pressure fit and uh it snaps on there and even when oh, i did roll two times today it uh it wasn't a problem cool. and um yeah so I, I sanded it all down and i was thinking about painting it but then when i started sanding it down I started sanding it down in, in one direction and then even along the sides and it yeah it actually give it a really nice uh, really nice finish it kind of looks like a natural fiberglass yeah, yeah, it does. Instead of like a smooth painted finish, you know, I mean, it looks yeah. like a natural. Yeah, I like it a lot. Yeah, it does. It almost looks kind of like graphite, almost. Yeah. But yeah, so it turned out real well, and uh, it's very cool. Yeah, so it just kind of snaps on there. And he tinted the windows in the in the tail, which I thought was fantastic. Yeah, I tinted the windows there, and then actually the the tail lights, uh, the glass there. Uh, yeah. I took some alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and uh, removed the the red dye that was on there. And uh, so those were totally clear, and actually darkened cool. them out too with the with the uh, window spray. Cool. Yeah. And of course, uh, seats, couple drivers, full legs. I mean, it's nice to have a deep interior, right? So you can actually put 
full geyser. Yeah, the, the seats, the, the rear of the seats I have to move back and uh, fix a little bit more so I don't have to chop their legs off. Yeah, but yeah. it's, uh, I think the Diamond That's an Star. an easy mod. Yeah, Diamond Star uh, figures, and they're, yeah, they're really nice. They look like great. Them. Yeah, they, they articulate really, really well. Really, really well. And then you're putting your battery in from the, from the top here. Yep. That's so, cool. So, like, if you can pull the lid off, and then the battery is just right there where the back seat used to be. Yep. And it's actually sandwiched in there. So I'm working on doing um, uh, a flip top, a flip body. Yep. So the bumper actually will go along with it. Now I don't have yep. it with me. And actually, so it's it's it'll be mounted up front with the yep. flip hinges. Yeah. And then in the rear, uh, from my uh, quite a bit I've taken from my my G6 build. But um, so, uh, Wordy made was really nice and uh, made me a removable rear winch uh, using his standard uh, fit. So that actually locks that. the body on there. Yeah. So and what was the tail light? I actually put the uh, yeah the contact in. So when the I plug license it in there, marker light is now a plug. Yep. So that's glued in there and painted. And uh, so yeah, so I can just take that out and uh, plug it in that there. That is awesome. And from uh, Al over at Hey OK, I asked him to do a dual wireless remote setup. So yeah. he, he was really nice, really, really helpful. So he threw in a relay in his uh, setup. So now with an extra channel, uh, front, rear, all day long. And they just wireless So you use remote. the same winch in and out. Yep, on the wireless. On the wireless. And then you flip your channel to get the front winch or the back winch. Correct. Wow. That's so, awesome. Yeah, it works really well. And uh, really since cool. it's a standard size, uh, I even have just a regular uh, yeah. toe loop there that I can throw in there if I don't want that. Or I can just oh, well, that's a good idea too. strap that down in there if I don't want that. I haven't had a front and back winch on a truck since I think like 2013. And I, I use it all the time. It was like the coolest thing. It was like a... Yeah, I just thought it was cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I used it yeah. a lot in PA helping other guys with. Oh yeah, stuff. yeah, exactly. Yeah, you probably could have used it today helping me out with my uh, low clearance Bronco. But you did all right. Actually, yeah, it's a fun truck. Yeah, yeah. beautiful truck. So yeah, so the the battery actually um, sandwiches in there. So what I did was when that flips up, so I removed the the entire. Boom! Rear. Look at that thing. So yeah, so I removed the rear seat. And uh, made buckets, so uh, I have some storage there. And uh, yep, yeah, so battery sandwich is in there, so it doesn't go bouncing around. So now I'm just going to work on doing a, awesome. a, a permanent mount for the, uh, the battery connectors, so I can just plug it in there. So I got and some small tweaking. You built a, a gas tank replica at the back here in the bottom. Yep. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. This is the coolest thing ever. And then uh, some of the electronics. So Hey OK did the winch controller and um, and the light controller. So okay. The, yep. So the, the headlights when I they're turned on, the uh, well I swapped out the the original red little plastic ones and from used, the marker lights at the front. Yeah, the marker lights yeah. and actually used the the ones that you screw on from Axial. Oh, cool. So those are my running lights. And then when I turn the truck on, the headlight. Well, and actually the headlights. Are actually from um, from Turnigy. They're they're high output lights. So I used those lenses. Oh neat. Um, so I removed them, the original ones, and put those in there, and used the axial light buckets. Uh, in here, kind of hard to see, but it's the axial light buckets. Yeah. And then I add an additional two LEDs in the light buckets beyond the high output ones. Wow. So I have a, a three millimeter red and a three millimeter white. Yeah, uh, and those are hooked up to Al's uh, light controller. So cool. when the car is just standing still and idling, the lights are red like the Mad Moose eyes. Ah. And uh, give it a little bit of gas, then the low beams go on. Yeah. And then with an additional channel, then I can put on the high beams, and then it's like wow, it's daylight in the middle it, of the yeah, it's night. totally insane. Yeah, it's yeah, it's really really bright. It's, it's double daylight in the middle of the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and then um, then the other thing I did after you did another. Review, I think it was you. You mentioned the um, uh, you mentioned the um, the dashboard. Oh yes, there's yeah, a lot yeah. of room in there. There so. is actually. If you you can, uh, I get this question all the time. How do I get the doors off of my JK? And you actually unscrew the bottom screws from the underneath the hood, and the whole windshield section lifts up, and the door yep. pins are actually underneath the windshield. Just so you know. Yep. 
And then you can also take the dash off, and the dash is like this big hollow plastic space waiting for something. Yep. So I took uh, a um, Sense Innovations uh, S1 yeah. sound unit and ripped it apart. <laughs> and there, and there, there is actually, believe it or not, there, there is actually small little slots there. So there is a, a yeah. speaker mount behind the, the glove box. Behind the dash, yeah. So I mounted the, uh, the speaker there, and then, um, well, it's a, the S1 Plus. And then what I did was the controller unit, I actually mounted, it was able to mount right behind the stereo. So I drilled out the two stereo knobs. Yeah. And uh, so cool. two screws I, I put there. And uh, the one knob raises the volume on the, the motor sound. Yeah. And the other one lowers it. Uh -huh. And then uh, I uh, rated my son's mini recon. Yeah. And uh, took the, the ser steering servo in there and uh, put that in there. So yeah. I'm turning right, the steering wheel's turning right. Yeah, so the wheel moves. Yep, so I got and, that. And uh, you added all the dash gauges and all that beautiful yeah, stuff. Yeah, so I took, uh, I got a little sticker pack from uh, Freak Skins. Uh, yeah. And the gauge stickers were the perfect size. They look really good, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, super nice. So, super nice. Yeah, that worked out really well. And then, uh, yeah, what else did I do? Uh, yeah, scale bolts, scale hardware. Love it. On the hinges and up there and on the yeah. hood. Yeah. And, uh, love uh, it. What else have I done? Uh, rock lighting underneath the the chassis yeah. along the chassis rails. Uh, wow. Yeah, brake lights. Um, yeah, pretty much it. You laughed about all my wires though. Oh, it's a lot of wires, okay? <laughs> it's a lot of wires. Like seriously, you have a truck that has three bulbs in each front headlight, plus the marker lights, plus the tail lights, plus reverse, plus rock lighting, plus the sound system, plus. All the regular stuff that we're talking about, like just ESC, servo, back, blah, blah. You know, I mean, it's just the wires. Is just I've had trucks like that mm -hmm. that had all that stuff in it, and it is a heap of copper. Yep. But hey, if there's a millimeter, why not fill it? Yeah, fill it up. Why not? Yep. Yeah. I'm it's amazed that you uh, managed to get all that into a skeleton chassis because there, there's not a lot of room in these. Like, they're no, not very there big. You know? No, they're not. There's, there's some... But you did really well packing it in. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So powertrain. Powertrain. Um, uh, motor is a looks like a Tekken. Yep. Tekken. Uh, hand wound. T thirty. Nice. And uh, running uh, was it? It's a twenty. And uh, with the um, I think it's the same. I don't know how many teeth that is. But it looks like Robinson Racing clutch or something, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I think it is. It's uh, actually from uh, for Wraith, and I use okay. that just because it's it takes up a little lesser room than the, the stock Axial one. Yeah, they are nice and short. Yep. And uh, Tekken uh, FXR. Yeah. See. And you've got a new uh, favorite servo brand here. You want to tell us about this one? Yeah, I picked it up just because... Um, well, over in Sweden, everything is stupid expensive. Um, yeah. Because it's sales tax on everything. Uh, but it's Altern, Altern uh, uh, USA. And uh, so it's it's a 20, uh, what was it, a 24 uh, kilo, if you want to help me on the ounces there. It's yeah. like uh, 400 and something. It's a yeah. lot of stuff. And lot on, on 7.2, it, it's yeah. uh, almost 32 kilos. Uh, of torque yeah, it's and a lot high of power. speed it is it's it's a lot yeah. and uh, nice servo man it's got aluminum case and everything this is a nice servo yep and uh, about 60 bucks i think is what they run yeah not yeah. waterproof but That's it's right. high up anyway so yeah it is actually yeah nice and high so yeah so it's it's real nice i, I, I haven't had any issues with it. i have it no. in having my son's wraith and he goes bashing with it oh. and i've got it in the recon uh the Recon G6, and I've got in this, and yeah. same servo, been running them, never any problems. Uh, you must have put metal gears in the XCF, SCX tranny. Yes, I did. Yeah. Yep. After all that, did, you did, have yep. to. The, the, um, uh, the uh, what do they call them? Cold pineapple in there, too. Oh, oh yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah some bevel. kind of bevel cut yeah. gears. Yeah, they're, they're bevel cut I've as well. I've seen those around. Yep. Neato. Yep, and uh, brass exhaust. For the uh, rock sliders. It's pretty cool. I admit. It's on the details. I like it. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, what's the next step for this? 
Everybody has a next step. I mean, if you tell me you don't, you're lying to me because everybody has a next step. I have a next step for all my trucks. There must be something on this that you want to do uh, or change. Well, next next step is going to be uh, finishing up my wiring. I really started trying to finish up the build about a month ago. It's been really busy with work, so I just haven't. Well, yeah. I finished. I finished up what wiring I could at twenty to two this <laughs> last night. I think you went to bed about ten thirty. In the middle of the night, yeah. Yeah. So. So, uh, yeah, so now it's yeah. just uh, cleaning up the wires a little bit more, uh, like routing them a little bit better, uh, doing a, a more of a, a permanent uh, fixture back here for, for the... Oh, uh, for the battery, main yeah, battery, battery plug? Yeah. yeah. So uh, so I'm not trying to change it underneath the rig, uh, just make it even yeah. more simple. Yeah. Um, yeah, what else? I don't know. I'm really probably going to do something with the, the front bumper. This W bumper, I really like it. Uh, I don't think I can get the new SSD winch in there, which I definitely want to do. I want to upgrade the winches. Yeah. Um, and, and the rear bumper is still the, the stock bumper. And since I did shorten, I shortened the flares a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And, um, yeah, okay, I lost a point today, but I like the look. So For tire tuck. Yeah, for tire tuck. Yeah. I can do that. So doing something doing something different with yeah. the, the bumpers, see what else I can do. Um going to have Pete uh, Atright over in England uh, do some really, really, really cool. We've already been discussing I'm going to do some really cool side pipes that are nice. coming out and coming down. So it'll be side pipe cool. with uh, uh, steps going in. Um, nice. Yep. Yeah, really stoked. And then he's going to do a really nice, uh, I'm talking about doing an internal cage so that can still put the hard top on. Yeah. So yeah, those, those I've seen that a few times ones. now. That if you do the cage and the hard top, it's uh, it's quite a bit of fitment work. Yeah. Uh, but boy, is it ever clean looking. Yeah, and he's really, really. Yeah, really his like metal work is top yeah. shelf. Yeah. Yeah. That's a cool idea, the back winch thing. I like that. Yeah, Ray did a really nice job on. It. Awesome. Unfortunately, he said it's only going to be a one-off. So. Oh. But I think RC four-wheel drive has something similar. But that was really nice and little. And All these guys out there can fab stuff. Yeah. They'll pick up the idea and try to pull it off. Yeah. It's a cool idea. Yeah, it is. Yeah. If you don't need it, just take it off. So you run this uh, same side of size of battery that I like, right? This is a 1300 3 cell. Yep. Yeah. Nice I and, love these. Nice and little. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah. Nice and small. Yeah. They don't weigh too much. Nope. Which is good. Uh, easy to fit in the truck. Yes. Very you know? easy. I think these, uh, the, the tiny trucks, you typically can't fit you know, anything bigger than like a 2200 three cell most of the time because yeah. I don't know where you're going to put it. Yeah. yeah it's, and if it's back here, it's really easy to change. Yeah. I mean, it's not a problem having an extra one or two in your, in your pocket. So yeah, that's true. So, um, but yeah, nice. the one thing I really want to do is, is put an overdrive up front. So ah. you know anybody can do an overdrive in a T training. Mm, I think there's probably somebody I know that can figure that out. Probably. That'd be cool. I mean, it, I mean, I have to say that the steering, even though, I mean, the steering on this is really wicked. You saw today. It's how totally the, insane. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't know how you could ever. I mean, the steering is just ridiculous already. And the short wheelbase, I mean, the thing just, it just goes around a corner. like, and It turns in like three feet or two feet just yeah, it by does. itself on yeah. a rock. It turns around <laughs> nice. nice. It's pretty crazy. Almost nine a dime. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Very nice. Well, thanks a ton for sharing your rig with uh, all of our viewers and Thank showing you. off your fantastic portal axles. Don't yeah. see those around here very much. No. Yeah, so the next step there, we're uh, putting together a uh, Kickstarter campaign. And, Yay. And uh, hoping to get that uh, off and rolling here in uh, end of September, beginning of October. And uh, what we want to do there is we want to get them uh, out to the masses. Uh, we've yeah. got 20 people now out there running them. Uh, you... Uh, mm -hmm. Desmond Mooney, Parker, uh, Josh Harris, uh, yeah. Bert Melchner, and a bunch of other guys. And we got Italy, Germany, people in Australia. So we've got all different continents, uh, cool. different driving conditions. And oh, uh, that's a good idea. So, yep, we're gonna have a real good proof of concept beyond just you know what we've been doing and, and saying. And um, yeah, we're really excited. Get them injection molded is is the aim. And good uh, plan. Yep. Yeah, and after this little chip, we got some real cool ideas, too, to, to um, make these things really, really versatile. Yeah, it's pretty exciting, actually. I'm a big fan of, like, new products and product development, and that what's going on with these portal axles is 
not only is it proven to already be a great product, but the, the new stuff that you have for the new ideas, it's going to be really top shelf. I'm pretty excited. Yeah, we are too. Yeah, we yeah. are too. And I mean, and it's nice too. It's the same hex to hex width as the SCX10. And so you're that's not, a big deal, you know. Yeah, it is. Especially because if we you already have, have a body. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, we've all got these truck bodies or we're about to do a build and they all seem to be fitting somewhere in that width, you know. And so it's not like I got to say this again and again. The, these portal axles are not an addition to something else. This is a whole new axle housing. And so you guys have done the, done it right by actually remaking the thing from front to back. It's not add-on parts. It's not, no. you know, uh, you know, it doesn't doesn't change what you've got. It's new. Yep. Trying to think outside the box. Yeah. And, you know, just clean sheet, clean sheet of paper. And, yeah. uh, you know, just really go nice. through it, you know advantages disadvantages different things yeah. and uh i mean sure there's there's some portals out there and they're uh, you don't quite get the same clearance um and oh well, you know, we like tiny trucks we like scalism and uh we like scale and we like epic redonkulous amounts of clearance yep yeah. that's ridiculous like i mean this is just wow yeah very well done thank uh, you great looking truck and uh i love black I love Jeeps, and uh, I love portal axles, so congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks for sharing. It. Yeah. Hey, you got an awesome awesome product, and some of the stuff you showed me now. <laughs> the new stuff? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we like product development. Yeah. So uh, if you are watching on YouTube, which you should be because this is a YouTube video, uh, go to YouTube if you're not, and click on the description box of this video because in there you'll find links to find the blog for Mad Moose RC. You'll find links to uh, Chris's Shapeway store, to all the products that you see going on in this truck. And we will link to uh, everything, Facebook for Mad Moose and the God, God Scale Clearance hashtag. You'll need to look that up too because there's pictures of trucks that are all over the world there running these axles in all kinds of different setups and uh it's a really cool thing so check out mad moose rc and what they're doing yeah and i almost forgot yeah uh, we are on instagram as well and right now we're at about 1600 followers when we hit 2000 ah one lucky person is going to win a set of the production ah. axles so all you got to do is follow us tag us in one of our repost one of our posts about the axles and tag us in that post and that's all you got to do do it and uh do it maybe you'll be uh, running a set of them mad moose rc on instagram and uh check out all their links and sign up if you've never seen this stuff before and uh if you happen to see a crazy looking truck just like this with portal axles i bet you it's mad moose rc go check it out thanks for watching